so I'll start with uh, Selesh uh, from Compulence. Just to give you a bit of a background, Selesh is the CEO of Compulence and has been in the IT industry for over 20 years. Uh, and uh, from, from a programmer to a technology specialist to an entrepreneur, he's played all, all the roles that are typically possible. Uh, retail, customer loyalty, identity management, ERP. As a chief uh, energizing officer, his key responsibilities are to energize his team. We probably would love to get energized ourselves. <laughs> uh, and provides vision and strategic direction to the organization and the team. And new growth opportunities and create more leaders within the organization, empowering them to take decisions. So, all over to you, Selesh, uh, for your time. Thank you. Okay, thank you. I think uh, I'd ask for a lower podium, maybe two feet lower podium, but uh, I guess I'll do my best. <laughs> so, uh, usually I, I don't use podiums because I'm not visible behind podiums. But nevertheless. Okay, so uh, I think this is a very difficult session post lunch. Uh, I mean, it's, it's very easy to get sleepy. So uh, I'm, I'm, I'll just take you from, from Chevy said he wants to be energized. So can I ask all of you to just stand up for a minute? So we're going to do a very small exercise. We're just going to wake us up. Okay? So uh, what we'll do is uh, we'll put our right hand up with our index finger pointing upwards and we put our left hand palm downwards okay and what we're going to do just follow me okay i'm going to do this so just go to the person next to you and if you just two or three of you just do this okay come yeah make a circle or whatever i think the gentleman in the blue shirt can i request you to join us Sorry, you may have leave us today. Somebody yeah, you can make a circle. Oh yeah, you can, you can join the other one. You can make a circle. So when I count three, what we're going to do, what we're going to do is, uh, we will try to hold the finger of the person and take our, take our finger, okay? okay? So we, we're going to catch and not be caught. Okay? That's what we're going to try to do, okay? So one, two, three. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think you're all energized now. So, so uh, just to take uh, just to take over from where where Shiv left, I think what we're talking about here is partnerships with India and Africa. And uh, uh, before I go on to to the slide deck that I brought forward with me, I just want to share a couple of uh, experiences uh, Shiv with you and the, and the rest of the team here. Uh, we have been uh, in business uh, uh, of technology solutions for over 20 years now, and uh, we are about uh, a $10 million company. We'll probably close at about $30 million this year. And uh, as a company, we've seen 27% uh, growth last year, 40% growth this year, and we are poised for 9% growth next year. So it is an amazing market that we are in. And it's unfortunate that our Indian friends are not here. Uh, but I can encourage you guys, I think you're in a great market. There's a lot of good things happening here. There's a lot of uptake of good technology. But the key, the key is, if you're coming from overseas, one, what I've seen uh, from experience is, companies that come with a long-term plan, with a long-term investment goal, are the companies that succeed. And two, companies that want to develop local capacity. These are the companies that really make it here. And, and we, we have several examples. I've got one great example in Sri Ram. Sri Ram came from India, uh, I think six, seven years back. Five years back, okay, I mean, it seems so long, Sri. So five years back, Sri actually came as part of a NASCOM delegation. And he set up shops here and never looked back. And he's created amazing capacity within the country. He's invested a lot. And uh, we as a company, we as a family came here and we've invested greatly in this country and never looked back and we've grown. We've grown very, very well and we're just growing. We're just growing leaps and bounds. And today we've got over 400 customers in 32 countries exporting our services out of Kenya. And I'm Indian, native, Indian origin, but I'm Kenyan now. So, so uh, Kusa Biashara, 
Uh, Edenium Interactive is a great example. The other example that we have, we, we partnered with a company called Eastern Software Systems from India. Uh, and we've been with them for over 10 years. And uh, uh, they are an ERP company. And we partnered with them. We've been their local partner. And we built a lot of local capacity. We've been able to uh, train people locally. We've actually gone and employed Kenyans studying in Delhi University and employed them so when they come back home, they have a job. So companies that have come with a long-term investment vision, building capacity here, are the ones that have won. And that's really the formula that works here. So uh, I wanted to today uh, uh, share, share uh, what's happening really in the mobility space in, uh, in East Africa. And I've got some great stories here that I want to share. And I really again wish the Indian guys were here. But nevertheless, you feel, feel free to share my slide deck with them. Uh, because I've got some very, very interesting data here, which I want to share with, uh, uh, with, with this team here. Okay, maybe you can uh, switch the... the uh, yeah. So... Uh, uh, so I'll, I'll use my uh, hand to move the slides. So basically, uh, before I, I go into my uh, uh, my uh, topic, I just want to share two beautiful stories which are so relevant in, in the current context. So this guy is Jim. Jim is a son of a very good friend of mine. And uh, Jim... This photo was about, I think he was two and a half years old. And uh, uh, he was asked uh, uh, by his father, Joe, to, uh, he told Jim, go and toast this bread. Uh, and Jim came out of, uh, of the kitchen with the bread in his hand, saying, Daddy, do I put this landscape or portrait? <laughs> And the other story, does anybody want to take a guess, what is this uh, little girl doing here? Okay, so this is Angie. So Angie is again a, a, another a kid of a friend of mine. And Angie, I think this photo was taken when she was about one and a half years old. And uh, 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 her, uh, her dad was watching some TV channel I'm not able to figure out. Uh, and she didn't like the channel, so she is trying to really move the channel. She's trying to swipe the channel as if it's an Android phone. And why am I sharing these stories with you today is because this is very relevant to our current scenario. These are our customers of tomorrow. Are we ready for these kids as entrepreneurs, as technology enterprises, to be able to serve the demand of this customer tomorrow? So I want to jump straight away into the, a little data on demographics of Kenya. If you look at this, uh, the, the age demographics, I think we've got a great landscape of population. If you look at our median age, our median age is 19.1 years old. We've got amongst the youngest population in Africa. Gender, I think we've got a great gender balance, 50 to 50. And uh, our urbanization rate is 27%. And look at, look, at, look at the age group, it's, it's just amazing. In the next five to 10 years, these guys are going to be employable. These guys are going to be customers that are going to be demanding a lot from us as business owners, as technology providers. If you look at the mobile and the digital transformation that's happened in Kenya, that's, that's made news, 80% Mobile penetration. That's humongous. That's amongst the highest it can get. Smartphone penetration is 67%. Now, 67% of the phones in this country are smartphones. Now, that gives a humongous amount of opportunity for all of us to be able to reach our customers who will be using their mobile phone to use our businesses, our services, to buy, to sell, and to interact with us. Today, social media is so, so heavily used 
in Kenya. You do one mistake as an enterprise, you are in social media big time. And it goes viral. You make one mistake with a customer, you are done. That's the, that's the power of the smartphone penetration that's happening here. And M-Pesa, I think it's, uh, uh, everybody knows, M-Pesa has been a great story and I think it's still writing that story. Uh, and M-Pesa has actually proven to us that mobile can be used for several applications to grow our businesses. Look at the numbers, crazy numbers. Six million transactions daily, 15 million users. That's crazy. And this number, you know, I, I picked it up maybe a couple of months back and it's already stale. It's growing exponentially. So that's the landscape we're talking about in terms of mobility. Uh, some, some very, very interesting data from uh, the Kenya Digital Enterprise Report that was published by GSMA, uh, where we're saying we've got about 8 TB per second of bandwidth available to the country through the undersea cable that came in Mombasa. We've got about 31% uh, uh, unique mobile subscribers are 31%. So everybody in Kenya has two or three phones. Uh, so unique number of subscribers is 31% of the population and a typical phone costs $15 on the street and a basic smartphone costs less than $100 and that's what is giving us the highest amount of smartphone penetration. And 20% of the population is using 3G and above and the rest of the population is using 2G but still a lot of mobile based transactions are happening. 60% of the Kenyans are, are uh, on a two and a half dollar per day spend on mobile. For a lot of Kenyans, airtime is more important than lunch. So if I have limited money, I will spend that money on mobile rather than on lunch. I'll go with a drink, but I'll, I must get my 100, 200 shillings. Do you agree? Don't you agree? I think mean, I've got a great smile in one of my one of the audiences here, and this is reality. And this is, I mean, they're not dreaming here. This is uh, out of a very, very legitimate report. And look at, look at our Kenyan entrepreneurs. I think we've got a great breed of Kenyan entrepreneurs. And if you compare them with, with the rest of the world, for example, if you compare them to Silicon Valley, uh, Tel Aviv, Santiago, Bangalore, look at the age group. I think it's amazing. We've got less than 35, 35 age, 86% of the entrepreneurs are are in that group as compared to uh, Bangalore is 37 percent. So it's it's amazing how 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 our entrepreneurs are budding and they're doing a great job. We've got hundreds of startups happening. I think uh, Sri has been a part of a few startups that uh, that he's been uh, closely watching, and there's some great stories coming out of here. I can tell you that. So uh, with that little background, I just want to share a few mobile case, mobility case studies that have happened in East Africa. Uh, some of the projects we as a company have been part of and some others we've not been part of but still they've been great, uh, great stories in our country. Uh, and uh, uh, these stories exist in, uh, in uh, Salesforce mobility, stories exist in mobile POS environment, retail store operations environment, retail consumer mobile app environment, uh, Ministry of Health, HIV, TB, malaria, drugs administration, and how to business videos for, for SMEs. So these are some of the case studies that I want to quickly share with you, which will give you a very clear understanding of what landscape you're playing here, and what are the opportunities that, that lie here in this country uh, when it comes to mobility. So uh, retail bank customer acquisition, so there was a retail bank that came to us and they said that they want to really ramp up their customer acquisition, particularly in the uh, rural space. So uh, we came up with, with a very basic, innovative product uh, solution based on mobile, which uh, where they said that of course they want to acquire rural customers. Uh, our solution was a biometric enabled tablet application for customer enrollment. So they go into the field and they securely acquire new customers doing the right KYC, know your customer processes, and and it's increasing the market penetration 
we are leaps and bounds. Uh, customer checkout at the retail stores. I've been into retail in India uh, in particular and I've seen the checkout in, in, in India, I'm sorry to say, is not the best. Once you've done your shopping, it's, it's, it's fun to shop in India, but when you want to pay, it's a nightmare. The amount of time you spend at the POS, it's, I mean, it's, it's criminal. We can't be spending so much time with a customer who really wants to pay and go, go away. So uh, we, have, we have a few challenges here, whether long queues, during peak hours, or, or during uh, seasons like Christmas, Easter, and so on, and long weekends. So uh, the customer came and said, look, we've got long queues now, how do we handle this? Uh, so we, we provided them with a mobile-based POS, a queue busting solution, which helps them reduce the queues at the POS and ensure that the customers are, are checked out very, very quickly. And the result is there's increased customer satisfaction, engagement. So as I'm uh, talking to customers uh, uh, with my mobile POS, I'm engaging with the customer and there's humongous opportunity there. The retail store operations, uh, again using mobile technology, the problem was they have an in, uh, inefficient inventory management and uh, uh, visibility in the stores. Uh, so we gave them a solution which was mobile, stop receiving and, and cyclic count systems, again mobile based, uh, silly stupid applications but bring humongous business value. Uh, and the result is quicker and efficient goods receiving, so when they're receiving goods it's very very quick, it's fast, efficient, real time and they have quicker and more accurate stock counts. It's amazing how this works and it's basic stuff. Uh, we've actually, uh, the, cus the customer that we were talking to were, were having a challenge with expensive back office operations for handling mundane customer queries and inefficient and expensive paper vouchers and credit notes. So gift vouchers are, are paper based or plastic based and they wanted to do away with it. So we actually came up with a, a consumer app. This is not an e-commerce app for customers. It's a consumer app which I'm able to engage with the consumer uh, of, of a retailer. And that has given the ability and the power to the customer to serve himself uh, at the retailers. And that has increased the customer satisfaction, it's reduced costs and increased revenues for the, for the retailer. Uh, uh, this amazing uh, application uh, where I think Shree's company has been involved in Indian Interactive, uh, the ministry had no visibility of the number of HIV or TB and malaria cases in the country and uh, the affected patients were not administering the, uh, the drugs that they were given and there was no follow through. So uh, Shree's company came up with a solution which is a mobile based app for registering patients, uh, for drug reminders, administration and notification and the result is increased visibility of number of cases, uh, increased patient engagement and treatment and reduce in, uh, reduction in the number of affected patients. So this is, this is causing a lot of revolution uh, in the health sector in Kenya. Uh, another amazing application, again Shree's company has been involved there, uh, where uh, they have gone and created uh, hundreds of how-to SME videos. One or two or three minute videos where, uh, uh, I, I spoke about the kind of entrepreneurs that we have, you know. These are young guys wanting to do startups but have no clue on some basic stuff on accounting or applying a loan and things like that, how to read a balance sheet, uh, how, to you, how to calculate my gross margin and so on, how to make a customer pitch. Now these guys have great ideas but have no, no idea on how to, how to run their business. So, so Shree's company came up with this uh, great mobile based uh, uh, platform uh, where uh, they are actually now able to see these videos, two or three minute training videos on how to do some of these things and, and as a result uh, there is quick and affordable access to basic business skills and training material. It's amazing how this has worked. So these are some of the, some of the applications that are happening here in Kenya. There's a lot of stuff happening in the entire East Africa and there's a lot of opportunities for uh, companies to, to, par to partner with us here and also for you guys to take this back home. I think we're doing some great work here. And uh, uh, I know that, uh, I mean, years back I used to say that uh, Indian companies can sell software but they don't buy software. 
but I think that's changing pretty quickly. Uh, I think Indians have started buying, as you said, 80% of their revenues come from product sales within the domestic market. I think that's a, that's a great sign, which means we should be able to sell our software into Kenya as well. And we're really looking for a two-way street where we can partner each other in, 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 uh, in both directions. So, yeah, that's, that's about it. Thank you.